Well, hello and welcome, fellow sojourners and fellow human beings, to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. I had plans for a different topic this week, but then a draft of the Supreme Court opinion got leaked and a battlefront in the culture war is about to get red hot. The end of Roe v. Wade is nigh, and I say yay as we address the hot topic... Hot topic! ...in fuego... ...of abortion. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your law clerk today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> You know, lately I've been feeling somewhat more optimistic about the direction of our culture, a growing sense that the tide is turning, that we are perhaps on the verge of another great awakening. Social media platforms that banish Christian satire are under new management. Woke corporations had their hands slapped and CEOs are rethinking their cultural activism. Parental rights are being reestablished and parents are removing their children from the indoctrination centers. And now Roe v. Wade looks to be going the way of the Dred Scott decision, which is in the trash bin of other bad rulings. I'm sure you're probably wondering, is this all because of ATC? Yes. Now, for those of you who are somehow unaware, on Monday evening, Politico released a leaked draft of the majority opinion written by Alito on the case Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. And in the opinion of Kavanaugh, Barrett, Gorsuch, Alito, and my favorite Justice Thomas, I have his rookie card and everything, have determined that Roe and Casey have no foundation in constitutional law. The decision of the justices was reached after finally reading the Constitution for the first time in over 50 years. The authenticity of the leaked document came from Chief Justice Roberts, who put out a statement, quote, Yesterday, a news organization published a copy of a draft opinion in a pending case. Justices circulate draft opinions internally as a routine and essential part of the court's confidential deliberative work. Although the document described in yesterday's reports is authentic, it does not represent a decision by the court or the final portion of any member on the issue in the case. Which is important to note. It's a draft, not a final ruling, which is probably why it was leaked to begin with. A desperate attempt to create public pressure and intimidate one of the majority justices into changing their minds. This is the first time in American history that a draft has been leaked, and it's going to reap the whirlwind. There will be investigations, and I do expect prosecution. But the leak has had its desired effect, which was to unleash panic and hysteria from unhinged celebrities and politicians. But before we get into their statements, we need to establish some facts first. Most important is this, overturning Roe v. Wade does not eliminate abortions in this country. It does not outlaw abortions on a federal level. It simply reverts it back to the states and legislative bodies. So for instance, in my state of California, in 2002, the state legislature passed a law that says, quote, the state may not deny or interfere with a woman's right to choose or obtain an abortion prior to viability of the fetus or when the abortion is necessary to protect the life or health of the woman. That law and many like it in 16 states and in the District of Columbia won't change with the overruling of Roe v. Wade, which is important to note because according to certain polls, 65% of people wrongly believe that if Roe v. Wade is overturned, abortion will be illegal everywhere because 65% of the population is ignorant. Like these folks from the celebrity class, actress Amber Tamblyn tweeted, quote, Tonight, our highest court declared war on more than half of its citizens, women, and birthing people everywhere. The overturning of Roe v. Wade is a political act of violence against us, and we will not accept it. We will fight, and we will not stop. Ever. I'm not sure if you've taken a civics class, but it's actually Congress that declares war, and they have not, in fact, declared a war on women. And it's not a political act of violence in that it's not violent. Okay, you're not being literal. You're being hysterical. Classic birthing person. Am I right, non-birthing fellas? Bradley Whitford opined, If life begins at conception, why aren't Republicans making sure that the men who cause pregnancy take any responsibility? Because they're not pro-life. They are anti-women. Have you ever met a pro-life person? Stop abortion and force men to take responsibility for the babies they help conceive? Oh, no. All right, fine. You twisted my arm. I accept your terms. Politicians naturally got involved. Here's Elizabeth Warren on the warpath. 
I am angry. Angry and upset? Angry and upset and determined. The United States Congress can keep Roe versus Wade the law of the land. They just need to do it. I, I've never seen you so angry. You seem to be... This is what the Republicans have been working toward this day for decades. They have been out there plotting, carefully cultivating these Supreme Court justices so they could have a majority on the bench who would accomplish something that the majority of Americans do not want. 69% of people across this country, across this country, red states and blue states, old people and young people, want Roe versus Wade to maintain we as the law of the children land. The Thank you. We Thank need you. to we, do no, that. We're if the American people are so in favor of abortion, then what's the problem with making it a democratic issue? Why are you so upset that it's now in the hands of elected officials who are subject to the votes of the people? Roe v. Wade is so popular it can't be decided by the people in their states. It's just too popular, its support is too broad, it must remain decided, as it always was, by seven old men in robes. Because democracy or something. Congressman Eric Swalwell jumped in the fray, saying, the Republicans won't stop with banning abortion. They want to ban interracial marriage. Do you want to save that? Well, then you should probably vote. It's hard to see the racial component to this since abortion disproportionately kills black babies, and the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, was an abject racist, but yeah, sure, let's stick with his racism line. Before deleting the tweet and then her account, Amanda Durati wrote, I do wonder how these white supremacist lawmakers would feel if their little white daughters were raped and impregnated by black men. Well, naturally, they would want to murder the person not responsible for the crime, but they would say it in a thick, racist accent. And of course, the unhinged folks of TikTok gave their usual measured and thoughtful response. If they actually do this, yeah, uh, that would be the time where rioting would be okay. I got the pitchforks, you get the gas and the torches. Uh, <laughs> What? Do that because uh-uh, you're not forcing. <laughs> no, no. There's only one solution to this, to all of this, because it's all interconnected. It starts with V, ends with E, and it's not vote. Starts with V, ends in E, but isn't vote. Vampire. Vulture. Voltage. Oh man, this freaking Riddler. Virtue? Is it virtue? Final answer, virtue. Hey TikTok, do you ever wake up in the morning and think you just want to burn it all to the ground? And what I mean by burning it all to the ground is those old white men and the women who support them who want to tell me what to do with my body. Definitely not virtue. You know what? I'll just go ahead and say it. If Roe v. Wade gets overturned, I am f getting a vasectomy. Vasectomy ends in Y. But I think I speak for the entirety of the human race when I say, we support your plan. Now, as to the serious business of what this means for shaping the culture, I think that Christians have to understand, and largely do understand, that Roe v. Wade is not the end point, it's only the start. In fact, there's even debate in conservative circles as to whether or not a federal prohibition of abortion would be constitutional. Charles Cook in National Review says, quote, the federal government enjoys only the limited powers that are delegated to it by the federal constitution, and setting abortion policy is obviously not among them. Abortion is not commerce, as that term was originally understood by the public, and nor is it a tax, duty, imposed, excise, debt, or credit, a rule of naturalization or bankruptcy, a standard or weight of measure, a punishment against counterfeiting, a post office or postal road, or the use of them, a type of patent, a lower court, an example of piracy or felony committed on the high seas, a matter of war or a letter of mark, a reprisal or an army or navy or calling forth or disciplining of the militia. Abortion is not spending, it's not naturalization policy, it's not the addition of a new state or territory, it's not the time, place, or manner of a federal election, nor in either direction does abortion come within the purview of any of the 27 amendments that have been added to the Constitution since 1787. 
That's an accurate statement from a strict constitutionalist. Abortion can be ended on a state level, but like slavery to be properly eradicated nationwide under our system, it would really require a constitutional amendment, which seems unlikely. This is still primarily not a legal or legislative battle. It is a spiritual battle. It is a battle for hearts and minds. As abortion becomes further restricted or outright banned in certain states, I believe that pro-abortion states will answer back in kind with increasingly liberal and radical policies. In fact, just hours after the Supreme Court draft opinion was leaked, Senator Blumenthal held a press conference on the steps of the Capitol calling for another vote on the Women's Health Protection Act, which which is a nationwide right to abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. The more and more threatened abortion becomes, the more and more radical its proponents become. What used to be safe, legal, and rare becomes shout your abortion. What was once begrudgingly accepted as an unfortunate but necessary evil is now celebrated by lighting up the World Trade Center pink. What was once private, painful, and difficult is now a reason to throw a party complete with cake. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, that's great, but the cultural fight is just beginning. So with that in mind, next week we'll lay out the Christian premises against abortion and tackle the common arguments for it in a more comprehensive way. In the meantime, like, subscribe, rate, and review, follow me on the major socials, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.